Hi, today we're going to take a look at a product called Trispectives. As you can see here, it was developed, actually it came out in 1995. This actually is Trispectives 2.0 Technical, which was the second version. And we're just going to go through, and there you can see a rendering that I created inside here. I'm just going to turn the rendering off temporarily. And we're going to build this model in 3D. Now with Trispectives, what's really fascinating about it, as I said, it came out in the early mid-90s. Uh, was designed to run on Windows 95. And here you can see we're going to start a CAD design with a one inch uh, grid and we're going to do some 3D modeling. It was really ahead of its time. I ended up actually in 1995 in AutoFAC, uh, which was a show at McCormick Place in Chicago. Attended there and I ended up winning a license of this and I really enjoyed it. It was way ahead of its time. So much so because of uh, the actual technology. The computer I was running at the time was like a 75 megahertz, if I recall correctly, uh, Pentium. So uh, this did not run anywhere near as fast as it is on this computer, which is actually a quad-core Xeon uh, based off of like the Q series, uh, the Q6600 series, similar to that. Anyway, as you can see here, I'm just uh, extruding the shape. And it's a little bit on the quirky side because it was a new product and I really think the innovations were amazing. And here you can see I'm just snapping to the grid and I'm drawing out a three by five rectangle. Now, when you do design these things, you do have the ability to edit the shapes and so on. And here you see a finished shape. I put in um, a half inch thickness on this and now if you want, you could just pull on those handles or you could right click on them and change the dimensions. And here I'll just change it to four and you can see it update. I could right click, edit the size box, change it back to three. I could have hit undo as well. Now the middle mouse button or the wheel actually rotates this model uh, which was, again, very uh, really ahead of its time when I think about it. Um, also here, I'm going to anchor this. If you don't anchor it and you try and make changes, sometimes it does some interesting things the way it moves and rotates. Or not rotates, but just uh, when you make a, a movement. Now here I just went ahead and painted it. And on the right you see there's all these libraries. And what's interesting too is it had smart shapes and where you could actually grab these shapes and just drag them onto the surface of your model and you could make adjustments to them. It was a very different way of thinking from the traditional CAD packages of the era, which basically you had uh, like AutoCAD type products as well as Pro Engineer. So you either had plane based modeling for 3D or 2D in most cases. SolidWorks did come out around the same time and was considerably easier to use for your typical engineer. But here you can see I'm going to turn on the model edges. And again, this was really nice. You could, you had so much control over the lighting and the effects, and it was just readily available and easy to use. And here I just right click up on the bar and you can see all the different toolbars you could use. Bring up. And I just did a zoom to fit there. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and show you. You could extrude off of surfaces as well of your geometry as long as they were flat and here I'm putting another half inch and you have add and remove now what's again different about this that's the booleans taking place in there whereas um, typical boolean, boolean modelers at that time did not you actually would select what you wanted to subtract or add to and this just did it which is amazing now here you what I've discovered you have the ability to move the actual uh, points here for references but uh, it it's a little on the quirky side. Again, I didn't quite ever master it, but here I'm going to use the project edges to project the edges off the model. And you can see the dimensions appear on some of the geometry. And I'm just grabbing those edges. And when you do this though, there isn't any relationship that's established between the geometry. So if you make a change to one, the other doesn't necessarily update, but you might not want that either. And here you can see I'm just drawing a line straight across, making sure I get exactly 90 degrees for that line. And three inches it just snapped to, which was, uh, again, very nice. And then there's the trim. Just click on what I want trimmed and what I want it trimmed to. And now I could just take that geometry and extrude it. So I hit, as I hit finish shape. You 
you can see that I just put in some dimensions to get it to the size I want. And there's also um, some additional options there. Again, you might want to anchor it. So if you make changes, it doesn't update. And again, I'm just using the middle mouse button to rotate. And next I want to show how to put a fillet on. And uh, over here you see there's the ability to edit. It's like a filter. There's those two buttons up there where you could select edges and faces or the whole model, or as they call it, the IntelliShape. And you just right click on these and set in the value. And now I'm going to do a chamfer. So for the chamfer, I just right click on an edge and you'll see the bevel edge. And here you're actually able to shift select, to select multiple objects. And then here you go to the chamfer. Now notice it's, it's a little weak on this area, but again, it was new and you didn't give you an angle, but you could actually calculate that pretty easily. And there you have it. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a hole in here. Now with the advanced shapes, or actually in this case just shapes, I just dragged the cylinder. And what's interesting is, again, you can move it and you could locate. It's not always the easiest thing when you're just learning this to locate it. It's a little confusing. But uh, again, you could edit the IntelliShape properties either by double clicking or right clicking on it. And here for the dimensions, because you could use this for an ellipse as well, you have a length and width versus just a simple radius or diameter that you could put in. Now you can see the faceting on the model. And the faceting was very common because computers were slow back then. So if you go over and right click on it, you could actually adjust the smoothness and you'll see that the facets will disappear. This is especially helpful for rendering. But on an older computer, you wouldn't want to set it too high because I remember it would be very slow to rotate, especially that was the era where graphics cards were talking the Matrox Millennium era where they were very slow. You're lucky if they could handle mil million polygons per second. <clears throat> now here, again, you could just use these surface tools and you just drag and drop. There's also an eyedropper tool, which I'm going to use here. As you can see, you can click on the eyedropper and select that. And this was really pretty neat because some of the other systems just didn't have this. Now you look at most of the CAD systems, they all have that technology. Now, you notice I didn't shell it like I normally do with my exercise one, and that's because the shelling technology was very simplified back then. It really didn't work well. You'd have to really model it completely differently or cut it out or model out what you want. And so I'm going to skip that here, but here I just set it to render, and now you'll see it will photorealistically render. There's the smart render tool. I did look to see if it was using multiple processors because I had a quad core in here and it didn't seem to be. So... Um, but now here you can see how jagged it is. These shadows especially uh, aren't that great. But again, that was just because back then you're talking a very slow computer. You wouldn't want to do that unless you were prepared to wait several hours. Now here I'm going to go ahead and set like the uh, anti-aliasing and just to try and get a cleaner effect. Another thing you can do, adjust the perspective there. If you saw on cameras and here I'm going to turn the lights and the lights, you're actually able to edit these. Now here I'm trying to make my feeble attempt to select them, but I, d I don't have the proper filter selected, and you'll see that I'll correct that in just a moment. But the uh, overall performance on this, and this microprocessor I'm using is one of the X series of Xeons that dates back to like 2009. So it's not very fast to today's standards, but boy, does it really work well with this system. I had to load Windows XP on it and it's 32 bit. But here you can see I'm adjusting the lights and just by turning on ray tracing, that will smooth them out and basically give us the highest level of quality that you could really get in here. And it was a fascinating little package for this. Now, later on, uh, th this was developed, by the way, by Steve Ballmer. I wouldn't say developed directly by him. His investment group, if I recall, was called Vulcan, and they started off. But this was, unfortunately, the last release. It was then sold off to a company that um, went ahead and they renamed this to a product called IronCAD, which is still around today. But this product really uh, was pretty amazing for its day. Again, I, I'd like to say it was a bit ahead of its too far ahead of its time to make it to where 
it was uh, where engineers really seem to enjoy working with it because I worked on unit graphics at the time. I worked a little bit on Pro Engineer, and this was just so different than those products. And to try and wrap your head around how to model these things, it um, the learning curve just seems steeper than if you were transitioning from one of those other CADs uh, directly to a, a different CAD system like SOLIDWORKS or something. And here again, you can see I'm just adjusting the perspective. Uh, again, these things were just so easy to just right click on. It almost seemed as though it wasn't designed by someone who used CAD, but someone uh, more of a multimedia type person, kind of like a 3D Studio Max, you might say. And it also had, if you look up there, those tools for extrude, there was loft, there was sweep and revolve as well. And <clears throat> definitely a fascinating bunch of tools there. Now, if you wanted to edit it, this does have its own feature tree as well. Uh, it's not really parametric though. It, it does have history to it and it can do some neat things. There you can see it. I just photo rendered it and you can see the reflections of the wood off of the surface of the model, which is just pretty impressive. And I'm going to go ahead and here's, bring up the feature tree in just a moment and show you how I could adjust to fill it. And it doesn't always do exactly what you'd hope it would do in this case, but it didn't error out. And here you can see there's the feature tree and there's the shapes and there's the fillets or they call bevels and you're actually able to edit the IntelliShape and adjust the radius and here I'm going to make it larger but you'll see it will blow out and unfortunately what I mean blow out the chamfer didn't carry over and that means it's not even really fully history based I think it's just um, it had some editability and there I just went ahead and deleted it but again, that was way ahead of its time. We're talking a product originally that debuted at $500. Well, that pretty much concludes this exercise. I hope you enjoyed it.